What's up, dude? If you've been looking for a new recipe that is maxed out in the flavor department, well then you have come to the right place. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a masa man curry that is so delicious, so tender, it will have your very own grandma begging for the recipe. Oh, she's fine. Now let's go! This recipe is gonna start with some fried shallots, which is gonna be the final garnish. But not just that, we're gonna use the oil we fry these shallots in for various purposes throughout the recipe, which is just gonna add a lot of amazing flavor. And so, here we go, sharp knife. Now, most important thing about making these fried shallots is that the cuts are consistent which can be a little difficult if you're not really good with a knife. In which case, I highly recommend you get one of these mandolins. It's a way to get really consistent cuts without having to be a professional. Amazing tool, I'll put a link for that down in the description below this video. You could also do this with onions, but shallots are really nice. Add those to the others. I got about five shallots right here. Before me here, I have about two cups of peanut oil. It's sitting around 350 degrees or so. I'm gonna drop these shallots in. Be careful, there is a, quite a bit of moisture in these shallots, so you wanna make sure it's not gonna bubble over. There's another technique I use for making these where I start the shallots in cold oil and that will get you a more consistent color on your final product although you can drop them in the hot oil too works just fine these are the kind of things you do not want to walk away from they'll start slow and then all of a sudden they'll go from colorless to completely overcooked it's been eight minutes now and I'm just stirring them pretty frequently they're just starting to get a little bit of color this is the point where don't even let your eyes drift away from these things also have a bowl with a strainer over the top ready to go ten minutes in as you can see here they're just about half golden being very careful here in fact right now I'll just turn the heat off plenty of heat in that oil to finish off the shallots. And again, if they're not all perfectly brown, it's totally fine. Now here we go, straight onto that strainer. And of course, we're saving all that oil for making this curry. And also just to have around, onion flavored oil is delicious. As Soon as that oil is strained off, get these onto a paper towel and spread them out. As they cool down, they're gonna get really, really crunchy and they're gonna stay that way. Man, the smell in the house right now is really good. And just remember, I'm bald. Moving on to the beef we're gonna be using in this curry and I have chosen short ribs today. Just know that when you see fat that's marbled into the meat, it is gonna braise so nicely. It is gonna be fall apart, melt in your mouth tender. These ones look especially good, but if you can't find short ribs, just go with some good old fashioned chuck roast that will get you a great result and it will be considerably cheaper than this as well. Well, although having said that, I mean, come on, look at that. Look at that. Um, what I'm gonna do with these, start my slice here. I'm just gonna get the meat off the bone here. Now, of course, do not throw these bones away. We're actually gonna be using them in the recipe today, which you'll see in a second. And I'll even just trim around. I'll cook that up as well. Something else that's really important to remember when you're braising beef is it's gonna shrink a lot. So always cut it bigger than you think you should. Like I'm just doing three big chunks out of this. For me, these are great size pieces for any kind of braise. You could do them a little smaller, a little bigger if you like. Got my beef cubes, got my bones. Let's start braising this beef. Now, taking another pot here, heats on medium high. I'm adding a good amount of that shallot oil. And next I'm dropping in the beef bones. After about four minutes, I'm gonna flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll keep that heat high, remove these bones and carefully add your beef. No salt. You'll see why in a bit we're gonna use fish sauce as our seasoning. If you need to do it in two batches, so be it. Once that's nice and golden brown, go ahead and flip it. You could skip the searing all together if you want. You don't have to do that. But since Masamon is a rich curry, I like it. Once your beef's all seared, you can go ahead and get that out and just repeat this process with the rest. Same oil right there. Smashing up a little lemongrass, straight in. Some crushed garlic, straight in. A Little bit of galang gal, which is like a root similar to ginger, a little bit in the same family. Now we're gonna let that get all fragrant in this oil. And I'm actually just using a MyPloy store-bought curry paste. I ordered this one online. I'll put a link for it down in the description. When I'm making curries, a lot of the times I make my own curry paste, but that does make the process a lot more complicated and you need a lot more ingredients. If you have the time and you wanna do that, just Google Masamon curry paste on YouTube and you'll find some great recipes. If not, just use a store-bought one. That's absolutely fine. Right now, I'm just putting in a tablespoon of this curry paste, and we're gonna toast this off in the fat. Wow, that flavor and that smell haunting in a good way. Marcus loves curries. I want him to smell this. Get, get in here. Oh, just a deep deliciousness smell smellorama. Get the hell out of here. Okay. <laughs> just a minute with the curry paste. In we go with the beef and all the bones as well, you'll see are in here. Those are gonna add a lot of nice flavor to this broth. No reason not to put them in here. All we're gonna do now is cover with water. You could use beef broth if you want, but you would need to find one that's really low sodium. Now we're gonna bring this to a simmer and begin skimming the top, trying to get some of this scum 
and some of the extra fat away. Just cleaning up our stock, standard procedure here, if you've ever made stocks. And after about 10 minutes of simmering, I'm adding about half a can of coconut milk right now, and a little bit of fish sauce. About a tablespoon and that's all that's going for now we're just going to let this gently cook with the heat just a touch over low for about two two and a half hours it depends how big you cut your beef but i'll show you how to tell when it's done and at this point you may be wondering how this whole curry is coming together so what i'm doing is cooking the beef sort of separately from the rest of the curry and then combining it all in the end which just makes it really easy to control how it all comes together in the end now while that curry is cooking let me tell you about today's sponsor Babel. summer travel is just right around the corner and with just 10 minutes a day Babel can have you speaking like a true local. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and its intuitive lessons can help you learn a language through real life conversations. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start learning a new language in as little as three weeks, and their lessons are also designed by real life language teachers, which I love. Babbel's obviously put a ton of thought into the phrases you're gonna be using while you travel, making it super practical. El jugo de naranja, la cerveza, la torta, Un vaso de agua. And it doesn't matter if it's about business, about relationships, about transportation, about food, they definitely have you covered. They also have several different subscriptions you can choose from as well as a lifetime subscription. Personally, in my life, I am on a mission to learn Spanish because it's just one of those languages where you can travel so many places in the world and put it to good use. I actually went to Mexico last December and plan on going again this December and I really wanna use Babbel to help me speak with the locals. And obviously I'm someone who's really interested in food food and restaurants, so that's where I want to use it the most. I've honestly had a ton of fun with Babbel, and I know you will too. You can click the link down in the description today to save 60% off your subscription. Again, that link will be down in the description. Now let's get back to the video. While that's cooking, we're going to make the rice, and you are in serious luck today. I've just figured out a new recipe for rice that I think is just... You see me? It's unbelievable, okay? It's really, really good. Check it out, two cups of rice. We're gonna make this aromatic lime, lemongrass, and coconut rice that is seriously good with so many dishes. And like any good rice dish, it starts with washing it out three times. And when I do this, I just add a little water, mix gently with my fingertips, fill with more water, dump that off, and repeat three times. As far as the ratios go, I like to do one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water, and even a little bit less than that. So for two cups of rice, I'm doing two and three quarter cups of water. If you cook it right and you give it a nice long steam after it comes off the heat, it's always just perfect. The other technique I use is just to have the water come up to a little above my nail. And it may seem strange to you, but that actually works. Go read the comments. I've got a couple little pieces of lemongrass here. I'm gonna take the back of my knife just to sort of break it a little bit, begin unlocking all those flavors. Man, I don't know if, if you've never worked with lemongrass, you really have to, it smells incredible. And what I'll do is just sort of tuck that down into the rice. And then here I have these kefir lime leaves, which are also very aromatic, very beautiful flavor. Love them, straight in there like that. Give it a little shake, pop a lid on this. I'm gonna set that onto high heat and I'll explain this process to you as we go. This works every single time. And you know, I've got a $200 rice cooker over there and lately I've only been using it for sushi rice. When I'm making regular long grain rice recipes, I'm now just using a pot. And I'll tell you what, I'm just getting better results every time. I feel like the rice cooker is sort of overcooking and drying out my rice. I don't know, let me know what you think about that subject. It took about five minutes to get to a boil. You see all this steam pushing out here, right? Now we turn the heat just very, very, very low, as low as possible. And we're gonna start a timer for 10 minutes. When that 10 minutes is up, just kill the heat, meaning turn it off and then start another 15 minute timer. Previously, I would do that for just 10 minutes, but I've been adding a little more steam time on the end and that 15 minutes is just perfect. And whatever you do, don't peek, just trust the process, trust yourself. There we are, 15 minutes. Ooh. Oh, the smell when you open it, it's so good. Now here's what I do, right? Let's take out all the aromatics. They've done their job. And then I just take a couple tablespoons of coconut oil, just like that, and we'll just fold this in. Look how fluffy, perfect that rice is. Ooh, yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, just having that little bit of fat in the rice, AKA that coconut oil, just makes it so you can feel sort of every grain going through your mouth. I don't know how to explain it. It's like you feel the rice better and it gives it that amazing coconut flavor as well. Look at that. Look how hot it still is, right? 15 minutes off the heat. Mm. Of course, there's plenty of heat in the rice just to melt the coconut oil. Let's give it a little taste. Mm. As far as rice goes, I don't think I'm ever gonna make it another way for just general purpose. Sushi rice, of course, is different, but this is just so good. I really highly recommend you give it a try. That's two hours hours on our beef. I would recommend you just grab a piece of it. Just see how, I mean, that just inserts so easily, right? It feels really tender to me. Probably could go for another 30 minutes or so, but it's extremely close. Some pieces are obviously gonna be more done than 
than others, but definitely getting there. As you can see, beginning to really fall apart. I'll let this cook for another 30 minutes, and at this point, we can actually start cooking the rest of our curry. We're gonna start by taking more of our shallot oil here into a big pot. I'm gonna let that heat up for a minute, and then I'm adding the rest of my curry paste. Oh, man, this for me is very exciting. The smell of that is nuts. I'm gonna cook this off for three or four minutes until that oil starts to separate back out, as you can see it doing here. Now, we're gonna go in with more coconut milk. Oh, look at that. Isn't that exciting? Look at these colors. Woo! Now, let's bring that back to a simmer. This has been simmering for five minutes. I'm now adting one cinnamon stick and one piece of star anise. We'll let it simmer for another five minutes. Next, I'm going in with some tamarind concentrate. If you can't find this, just leave it out. It is a nice ingredient for Thai cooking. Extremely black, as you can see. It adds this nice sour sort of taste to your food. Don't need a lot, it is strong. Just two teaspoons is all in this whole recipe. Again, going in with more fish sauce. You wanna season little by little, right? And then as standard protocol, we'll taste it again at the end for one final adjustment of the seasoning. Little bit of white sugar going in. A lot of recipes call for palm sugar, but I just prefer white sugar. I want the more subtle sweetness without all the flavor from the palm, if that makes sense. Let's stir, stir, stir. And by the way, I've just had a cracked lid on this the whole time it was cooking. That's been two and a half hours. Lid goes off. Now in the spirit of French technique, I'm gonna let this sit in the liquid it cooked in for at least 30 minutes. Just like a steak, it needs to rest, and so we'll give it 30 minutes. And trust me, it makes a big Big difference in tenderness. Next step, I'm gonna get my beef out, just onto a tray for now. Lemongrass, you can throw away. And now what I'm gonna do is add that braising liquid into the rest of the stew. And I'm actually gonna skim away a little bit of this fat. I like the look of the red fat on top and the flavor it brings to an extent, you know? We don't need this much, it's just too much. Good opportunity to practice your skimming technique, swirl the middle and then push around the outside. So the uh, short rib was so fatty that it released so much more fat as it cooked. So I'm just pulling some off. Next, I'm gonna be adding this Japanese sweet potato to the curry. If you want, you can absolutely just use regular potato. That's absolutely just personal preference. I just love sweet potato with the masamon. However, if you're not a sweet potato fan, you're more of a potato potato fan, just use regular. Yukon Golds would be great. In they go. If we were to cook everything in the same pot, it would be really hard to time the doneness of the beef with the sweet potato. This way we can make sure everything is just spot on. This has been cooking for 15 minutes now. And as you can see, the sweet potatoes really thickened up the sauce. I like this thickness right here. It's not watery at all. It's not super thick either. The beauty of having the potatoes in here is if you want it thicker, just stir, right? The more you stir, the more those potatoes are gonna break up a little bit and thicken the sauce. But I like it right here. Now here we go. Back in with the beef. Oh. <laughs> wow, there's the little pieces on the bone too. You could chop those and put them in there. I'll probably just keep them as little Scooby snacks for the cooks, which is me. Now let's get the beef submerged. The beef is totally done. Just needs to sit in here for five minutes and warm up. I've got the heat off right now. Now here's the thing. I'm adding one Thai chili. I don't want this to be blow off my face spicy. For me, I can't, I can't handle it. I wish I could. There's a big difference between authentic Thai level of spice and like Thai food made in America level of spice. You know what I mean? It's just, we can't handle it. Most of us can't handle it. Although some of these Texans down here, I'll tell you what, I think they can. You guys can handle your heat down here. So stir that in. Now at this point, you can taste it and then adjust with fish sauce or sugar or tamarind. But mm, this is so rich. It's so delicious. I'm uh, absolutely just happy with it right now. So stepping away. Throw down your towel and step away. When you're cooking and you taste something and it tastes really good, do yourself a favor. Put down the spatula and step away. Your job is done. It's time to serve, my friends. Masamon curry. I garnished it with the fried shallots, some sliced red jalapenos because I didn't want to do more Thai chili, and some crunchy roasted salted peanuts. And I, I filmed it. The whole... texture on everything is so nice. We get food from this Thai restaurant near where I live here in Austin, Texas, and we get this curry a lot. And I would say this is on par, if not better than the one from that restaurant, so. Oh yeah, it's my favorite Thai dish. It's like replicated perfectly. It's so good. I don't know if you're Thai, let us know, you know, what you would have done different. I'm not like some master Thai chef, I dabble. I only dabble. 
first, but it's very good. Now, before you leave, remember to check out the description underneath this video for links to all my favorite products and equipment, as well as that Master in the Making ebook. And if you're down to keep learning today, here are two more curry recipes. I know you're gonna love that. Thai curry is super underrated on our channel. It's one of our favorite things we've made. And if you wanna go more Indian, the chicken tikka masala is absolutely incredible. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out.